Hello and welcome back guys, this is Ibrahim Qureshi here and today we are going to configure iSCSI storage using FreeNAS. This is the uh, part 3 of uh, the series uh, configuring FreeNAS um, and uh, if you haven't seen the part 1, part 1 is how to install FreeNAS on as a VM on your virtual environment for your home lab and part 2 is how to configure the entire free NAS which we have went through um, so be sure to check them out um, I have taken uh, gone through step by step uh, how to configure it uh, and this lab is basically on um, one of my friends who is learning virtualization with me and uh, uh, he has kindly allowed us to use it again for creating this lab so what we'll do today is uh, continuing from previous topic we have uh, we have got the um, shades already created and we have presented it already and they are here uh, what we'll be doing is we are going to present iSCSI storage to the ESX host So let's get started for showing you everything from Scratch what we have done is we have built a new uh, ESX host Let's show it here So this is a brand new ESX host which we have built and it's having an IP address of 64. So we'll quickly start our session and uh, we'll add this. This is a virtual ESX host. You can see it running here ESX v1. So we'll add this host to our brand new cluster here and then we'll provision iSCSI storage. So there are two things we need to do before that. Um, which I'll talk you through. So the host is called ESXV-1 dot I'll let uh, Harit complete the well but we have mistake we should rename it in the host because we we put it dot com it is dot local so that's keep fine the, yeah. give, give dot local don't worry okay and then give the root password and once the host is added what we will be doing is um, click next we don't need those cancel that yeah we will accept the thumb print we'll accept the SHA-1 thumb print and click OK so this is another demo for you guys who are new how to add a ESX host to your vCenter so this is your brand new ESX host which we are adding and it's coming up here as you can see we'll let it configure it will take some time to be configured and there you go it has been added to the vCenter as you can see when you add the host for the first time it will be on maintenance mode and that's a good practice anyway and uh, first thing which we'll be doing for adding your iSCSI storage is will be um, I'll show you the data stores there's no data stores here as you can see so to add your iSCSI storage first go to configure and first create your very uh, first um, IP uh, for using uh, the iSCSI storage so for doing that we need to go to VM kernel adapters and then we'll be creating add a new adapter and then we'll use the virtual machine port group for standard no sorry we'll be using a VM kernel network uh, adapter sorry so 
this is what we are going to do we are going to use vm kernel network adapter click next and then we will say select a standard switch click browse and use the existing switch I only have one switch added here click next and then we will be uh, giving it a name ISCSI hyphen hyphen traffic okay and make sure you don't select any of these because this is going to be specifically for ice curry traffic and then we need to specify an IP address this is a slash 22 network so I am um, correct me if I am wrong can we use 55 here no maybe you already use it so uh, you can put, put it to 65 okay for the purpose of this demo we are going to use 65 IP address and then the subnet is a slash 24 so it will be 255 255 255 and 0 before we go ahead I always want to check the IPs whether they are not taken by any you know devices so we will just check whether 65 is used by anything no it's not which is good so this is the first step in in our task so we basically add a iSCSI traffic with an IP address which is going to be talking to our free NAS which is sitting here the free NAS is running on 192.168.0.61 and uh, the portal for free NAS is listening for anything coming to to it so it's on 0000 which we explained in the previous session in the configuration so it's going to allow all the host so before we connect we need to create now that we have the IP which is good but we need to create a software initiator iSCSI software initiator to do that we jump on to the next tab which is storage devices Sorry, uh, we need to go back here again. Sorry. Uh, so we were working on the VM kernel adapters, right? So we have created the adapter, and it's basically uh, 64 is the management IP, and 65 is the VM kernel IP. Uh, sorry, the iSCSI traffic IP. Now we are going to go to storage adapters and we are going to add a software adapter and this will be add software iSCSI adapter um, because we are basically using FreeNAS to present iSCSI storage we, are, we will be adding a software iSCSI adapter click OK and then it is simple as that so this is the second step completed and this was the main step so as long as you have the software iSCSI adapter now what we can do is select the adapter which I think is this VM HBA HBA stand for host bus bus adapter um, at the end of the day this is uh, a st iSCSI storage is like storage like a hard drive and to connect to your hard drive on your computer you use a SCSI bus which is a local bus but to connect to the storage which is remotely here on FreeNAS you need to use uh, we are using iSCSI which is over the IP traffic okay does it make sense does it all glue together so the easiest way to add the storage over here as this is the home lab and we did not enable any security here purely because it's home lab um, is to go to the adapter select the adapter and you can see all these options available for you once you get these options go to dynamic discovery and check at static discovery just to be sure there is nothing there go to dynamic discovery and click on add and then we the simple thing we can do is just give the IP address of our storage which is quickly 192.168.0.61 and that's all we need to do 
192.168.0.61 the port number is the default port number for iSCSI which is 3260 just to clarify if we go back to the FreeNAS and we click on portals we can see that it is also listening from any IP on that particular port number 3260 does it make sense yeah so we go back here and click on OK and it will ask us to rescan and that's it guys this is the second task done um, we will need to rescan and it's simple as that we are already 10 minutes into the video and I am sure you are quite excited to see your storage now um, that's it this is done to see our um, success we can click static discovery and we see all the devices which is presented from our free NAS whoops what did I do that uh, yeah you can see all the devices so that means that's a success we can see everything which is presented from our free NAS which is obviously one two three four targets and the global target will be this one so there will be five targets which we will see there you go one two three four five targets which you are able to see here okay so now we will be presenting well to be honest we, we don't need to present a LAN it will be automatically available for you over here see there you go all the data stores are here automatically because they are formatted and they are available for you to use if you click on one of them you can see that they are already already running data stores for you all of them are available four of them so hopefully you enjoyed this session this was a quick 10 minute session if you have missed out how to install free nas check the session part one and if you want to configure free nas from scratch check the session part two and this is the third session hopefully you like this please click on subscribe like and share it with anyone who uh, who is learning virtualization really so thanks a lot cheers bye